ladies and gentlemen. All right, a warm, a warm welcome to you all. It is a commonplace that side events after lunch can be quite challenging. But all of you look like rather avid side events followers, and I'm sure you had no lunch at all. So we just continue. We have a, we have a very important side event this afternoon, co-sponsored by Colombia, by Germany, by Thailand, and by the UNODC. Um, we will have some opening remarks. We're going to have three very important panelists. And then, if time permitting, there will be some uh, concluding remarks. Without further ado, may I invite Mr. Yuri Fedotov, the UN Undersecretary General, and also UNODC uh, Executive Director, to open this event. Mr. Fedotov. Thank you. Executive Director Fedotov, dear Deputy Executive Director Lale Demos, dear Mr. Cabrera, dear Kun Chai, Excellencies, distinguished delegates. I would like to thank you all for joining us today at the side event exploring the role of alternative development in the post-Angus framework. I am honored to speak here today among such distinguished panelists from Colombia, Thailand, and UNODC, all of them long-standing partners of Germany in promoting ID, AD as an important pillar of international drug policy. It is a great pleasure to share the panel of this side event along with UNODC Executive Director Vidatov, and I would like to thank UNODC and in particular the Sustainable Livelihood Unit for its great support and cooperation over the years. I'm very pleased to speak here along with Dr. Mr. Cabrera, director of the recently formed Presidential Agency for Illicit Crop Subsidation in Colombia. Last year, I was able to witness firsthand the po positive effects of AD in your country and to learn more about its role in Colombia's national drug policy and the peace process. I am also delighted to meet again our dear colleague Kun Chai of the Mai Fa Luang Foundation of Thailand, which has been an outstanding partner of German development cooperation. At this point, I would also like to thank Thailand as well as our fellow EU member states, Peru, Morocco, and other co-sponsors for their excellent cooperation concerning the resolution on alternative development, which was adopted at the 59th session of the Commission on Narcotic Drugs last month. Angus 2016 is a critical milestone in international drug policy. It serves as a unique opportunity to strengthen human-centered approaches to addressing the world drug problem. We need to identify ways of mitigating the disastrous effects of the illicit drug economy on, mil on millions of people worldwide with respect to human rights and development while fully complying with the UN Drug Control Conventions. However, in order to achieve the universal implementation of the 2009 Plan of Addiction, we, the international community, need to step up our efforts. In the lead up to Angus GIZ, on behalf of the German Federal Minister for Economic Cooperation and Development, in cooperation with UNODC and other international partners, have been implementing three expert groups meetings on alternative development. The results of the discussions have been summarized in a joint UNODC government of Germany conference room paper, which has been elaborated with the support of the NGO Transnational Institute 
and disseminated on the occasion of the 59th session of the CND. I would hope for this paper to be spread widely among member states and the international community as it contains important key messages regarding successful AD policies and can serve as a basis for a, a substantial roadmap for the post-Angers agenda. I'm very pleased to see that alternative development features so prominently in the Angers outcome document, which was drafted in Vienna last month. I believe having a separate section on AD and development-oriented approaches to drug policies is an important step in the right direction. Within this section, several new aspects are being discussed, such as the nexus between the land issue and AD, environmental impact of illicit drug crop cultivation, and improving research and impact assessment, which are crucial to its long-term success. In addition, I gladly welcome the successful adoption of this year's CND resolution on AD, which had been tabled by Thailand, Germany, and Peru. It complements the Angus outcome document by highlighting essential components such as proper sequencing, the promotion of the rule of law and the links between AD and the 2030 Agenda on Sustainable Development. Ladies and gentlemen, I am a farmer too, Mr. Lali Demos <laughs> told you and and I tell you it is right. <laughs> My family has made its living based on farming activities for centuries. I know from my very own background how many challenges, uh, challenges this life may bring, not even considering the hardship in many truck crop producing regions. Therefore, I'm worried to be quite frank. Despite the prominent role of AD in the Angus process and more and more governments expressing their desire to implement AD on their national territory, we still face a large discrepancy between its political endorsement and the actual funding this approach has received. The lack of sufficient funding for AD as clearly showcased in the World Drug Report 2015, needs to be addressed urgently. In order to both get a better understanding of the global funding situation and explore possibilities in terms of new and creative funding mechanisms, GI said on behalf of the German Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development has commissioned two studies on this problem, which will be finalized later this month. The aim is to thoroughly analyze the funding situation and to develop recommendations to come up with innovative mechanisms for AD funding. I would also like to bring to your attention the proposal that came up during the previously mentioned joint UNODC Germany expert group meetings to set up a working group on ID funding to come up with new proposals until 2019. I would like to invite you to debate this question during the discussion. However, the good news is that we can see an emerging trend towards more invigorated alternative development portfolios with a greater integration into the broader national development frameworks and budgets. In addition, I believe that we need to start looking at ID from a broader perspective and emphasize links with other issues of global relevance such as 
poverty reduction and food security, the links to environmental issues, especially in the field of deforestation, and by the links of the drug issue to global challenges such as climate change. Ladies and gentlemen, getting a better understanding of these linkages will help us to create synergies with other sectors or partners which have so far not been involved in AD interventions. We are convinced that there are natural links between AD and the issue of climate change. Therefore, we would strongly suggest analyzing the use of climate finance tools and other related new funding streams by creating new incentives for investment in ID, AD projects. The overarching SDG framework will help us to broaden the scope and understanding of ID, AD no longer referring to it as a, merely a tool of drug control in the stricter sense. I would like to stress that AD interventions based on the UN guiding principles on AD can make an important contribution to sustainable development efforts and the achievement of the SDGs. There is plenty of evidence and lessons learned of sound development-oriented drug policy interventions that showcase the links between AD and sustainable development that should be taken into due consideration. Poverty reduction, food security, sustainable agriculture, as well as access to land and the promotion of peaceful societies are just some of the thematic areas of the SDGs which are also closely linked with AD policies. Ladies and gentlemen, I firmly believe that we should harness this momentum and use Angus as a forum to promote the success stories of AD. The post Angus framework of 2016 is the pre-Angus framework of 2019. Let's join our efforts until 2019 to visibly improve the funding situation of alternative development, to better integrate AD into the broader development agenda, and to thoroughly analyze its linkages to poverty reduction, environmental aspects, climate change and peace and security issues within the STG framework. Let's join our efforts to assist interested governments in implementing and adapting their own national drug policies to incorporate development-oriented and human-centered approaches to addressing the world drug problem. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. I now turn the floor, give the floor to Mr. Disnada Diskul, our friend and colleague from Thailand, uh, specifically the chairman of the May Fa Luang Foundation under royal patronage. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you very much. Madame Mottler, Elder, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to be on this panel amongst like-minded dignitaries addressing an esteemed audience at this historic moment. Over the past decade, I believe alternative development has come a fair way. In these past two days at UNGAS, we hear member states and organizations echoing calls for more balance, develop-orientated, people-centered drug control policies. The recently launched Sustainable Development Goals and the United Nations Guiding Principles on Alternative Development, which Thailand is proud to have played an active role 
in helping shape, serve as valuable references to guide our AD efforts. However, our work is far from over. We need to ensure that we move forward from words and recommendations to actual implementation on the ground with measurable and sustainable outcomes. So please allow me as a development practitioner to speak frankly based on over 50 years of experience working on the ground directly with the people. In 1960s, Thailand has the largest opium growing country in the world. His Majesty the King has led 50 years of continuous, over 50 years actually, of continuous efforts of, to develop the rural area of Thailand and improve the livelihoods of the impoverished highland ethnic minorities. His Majesty's approach has led to a long-term national development policy. Let me mention again, has led to a long-term national development policies to tackle opium cultivation through improving the people's well-being. As a result, Thailand was officially removed from the UDNODC's list of opium growing countries in 2003. Based on our lessons learned, Thailand has reached out to assist other countries such as the Republic of the Union of Myanmar, Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, Republic of Indonesia, and Laos People's Democratic Republic. From these experiences, I wish to highlight several critical factors we believe are fundamental to, to the success of AD programs. First, we need to recognize that AD is not just about drugs but about people and their livelihood. The problem of illicit drug cultivation can only be addressed by solving the problems of poverty, providing the people with viable livelihood opportunities, and ensuring overall sustainable development of an area. Only with legal choices in life can people stop illegal activities. Therefore, Viable livelihood alternatives need to be in place before eradicating illicit crops. Importantly, development assistance should not be based on any conditionality. We must provide aid to entire communities to uplift their livelihood, rather than targeting only those who grow drug crops. Second, it is important to adopt a holistic and integrated area-based approach. Addressing the problem sets of entire, entire area, the whole community. We need to make sure that the basic factors of that development are in place. For instance, water management system and access to productive land. These basic requirements must be met while we plan for longer term activities, such as capacity building, value addition, marketing, and branding. Third, we must involve all levels of stakeholders in the entire development process. May them be central government, local authorities, and the grassroots community. The local community must be on board and participate in the project from the very beginning and throughout. In order to foster a sense of ownership and empower them to stand on their own two feet over the long run. Women in particular are often the breadwinners of family and key drivers of communities development. We also need to work with the young generation. Why? They will be the ones who are leading their community in the future. Fourth, AD programs must be accountable and properly measured. The success of AD cannot be based, cannot be accessed based on reduction of illicit crop cultivation areas. 
we must take a longer term view that is human centered. So outcomes rather than input and output must be measured. What do the people get out of it? Or the direct impact of the lives of the people and all aspects of their well-being. Socially, economically, environmentally, culturally must be the indicators in line with the SDGs. Fifth is the importance of trilateral, regional and international partnership and cooperation in sharing best practices, enhancing the effectiveness of AD programs. Thailand has been and will continue to be a donor country in software, providing our experiences in partnership with other donor countries to assist communities on sustainable alternative development programs. We are delighted that through the Mafa Lung Foundation, we will be partnering with the Federal Republic of Germany on the global partnership on drug policies and development to assist countries and communities wishing to implement AD. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that alternative development and rule of law are two sides of the same coin and one cannot be attained without the other. Rule of law creates conducive conditions for AD to be possible and AD enhance rule of law from the grassroots level. Participation of communities in the AD process fosters a culture of lawfulness and governance within the community, promoting peace and national security. In addition, I would like us to seriously consider the implementation of AD in urban settings, particularly when two thirds of the world population will live in urban areas in the future. Poverty, marginalization, lack of employment, lack of dignity, and lack of opportunity all also exist in urban areas. Therefore, I truly believe that AD approaches can be applied as problems of poverty and crimes in slums and urban areas can also be addressed through a people-centric approach. Addressing the problem of its root cause and providing the people with basic needs, job, education opportunities, empowerment, respect, and the sense of dignity. Finally, I wish to reiterate that alternative development and sustainable development are fundamentally linked Central to both alternative development and sustainable development is addressing problems and needs of the people. Let me repeat again, the two links between alternative and sustainable development in addressing problems and needs of the people and empowering each individual to be able to lead self-reliant, dignified lives over the long run. If well-being and resilience are fostered at individual level, we will have strong communities, regions and countries, not only more resistant to drugs and other crimes, but ready to develop and carry on sustainable livelihood. Thus, AD programs properly carried out will contribute to realizing the SDGs. Thailand provides concrete evidence of successful projects, fulfilling the SDGs, resulting the, in the community's improvement well-being and deterrence from illicit cultivation. Thailand stand ready to share the real living proofs for those who are interested. We believe our experiences and lessons learned can benefit communities in need, fostering more peaceful and inducive societies and creating a strong found foundation to countering the world drug problem in a sustain, sustainable manner. Thank you all, sincerely. We all, we all
thank the chairman. We all thank the chairman of the Mafu Luang uh, Foundation uh, for sharing with us 50 years worth of experience in Thailand, but also for having traveled this far with your health condition, with your throat, to sorry. deliver your speech. No, 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 don't be sorry. We really appreciate that. We appreciate that. Very well. We'll listen to our three panelists. I, I suspect we have about maximum 10 minutes to take on some questions or comments. Um, I, would, I would prefer, actually not comments, I would prefer to have questions, questions addressed to any of the three panelists, direct, clear questions, so that we can make the most out of this uh, gathering today. Who wish, wishes to go first? Dr. Tumi, nice to have you here. First of all, I think um, we have to define first what is repli replicable. What do, you, what do you mean by that? If you mean it copying, forget it. Any copy is a bad copy. It never works. So what do you have to do? I think first and foremost is that in any region or community that you're going to work with, you don't go with development project. You've got to go in there and find out what are their problems, needs, and wants of the people and you got to get down to the grassroots and not from the head of the village or the committee of the village no you got to go to every house and every home at least 80 percent 70 to 80 percent to learn from them what are their problems what are their needs and wants it's not what we decide in this room and push forward into those places and do it that's wrong. That's why AD failed all these years. Because you never identify the problems and needs of the people. That's why I think uh, to answer, I think, your question as well, and the lady from Canada also, applicable. Yes, one can adapt what one do. But we have to find out the communities. Each communities and each country have different problems. So find the problems and needs, and you will hit the nail on the head. Thank you so much. Thank you. Perhaps uh, a, a...